Welcome back to part 8 of our basic to advanced floor plan mini series. Enjoy the video. So now that we have our concept plan mostly resolved, let's go to our detailed plan and let's try and get some structure into the plan. So I'm going to go to column, structural column, then I'm going to load a standard concrete rectangular column. So from the library, you go down to structural columns, concrete, concrete rectangular. Let's load that in. And let's use the smallest 300 by 450 millimeter column. Let's rotate them and let's place them in the corners. I'm going to come back and revise the positioning a little later on. So now that they're indicatively in place, let's align them. So on the modify tab, let's go to align. And then let's align the outside face of the block work with the outside face of the column. And let's do that for both sides. And let's do that for the other columns too. So the next thing we can do is add a structural grid. So we go to architecture and we go to the data panel and then we can select the grid. And then we select a start point and an end point. And that forms our grid. To get the grid bubbles, that is a loadable family. So if you select a grid, you click on edit type and you have this symbol line here. At the minute it's showing as none. So what we need to do is load a family. So if I select OK on that, I go to insert load family, and then I'm going to go to my UK library annotations, architectural, and then I'm going to select the grid head circle and then select open and then go back to my grid line, go into edit type and under the symbol that now appears and then I can select it. Also in the type parameter properties for this grid type, grid one, you have the symbol selection choice. So as per this drop down, you can see that you can either have it as either end one, which is the start click or end two, which is the finish click so at the minute we have end two selected so at default all of the grids drawn would show the grid bubble at end two so what does that mean if i click ok then i click on create similar what that means is that end one is your first click and then end two would be your second click so end one is your first click and then end two is your second click so you can see here that every time I've clicked for my grid lines, it always has an end one and an end two. If I now change that type and then tick both of them, then it would have a grid bubble on both ends. So then I can select end one and end two, and they both have a grid line. And end one and end two, they also both have a grid line. What Revit is also quite smarter is numbering the grids automatically. So if I select the initial grid, and I change this to one. The next grid that we draw, if I select create similar, 
this would automatically be named 2 and then the next one after that will be named 3 and so on. So let's go through and place all the indicative structural grids for this project. Another thing to note is if you change to, for instance, a vertical grid, you can renumber or re-letter that grid. For example, I'm going to call this A. And then the same would follow with regards to the numbering. So if I go to create similar, and then the next one comes through, that will be B. And then the next one after that, that will be C and so on. So let's align our grid. So for instance, I drew this purposely out of alignment with the other two. So A and B are aligned and C is not aligned. If I select either of A or B, so for instance, let's select B, you can see this little blue dashed line in between them. That means that they are connected and aligned. If I move that, they would all move together. And also, if I drag this to meet up with C, you can see another blue dash line, which appears there. And you can see the alignment here as I move the mouse, bearing in mind that the left mouse button is still held down. And then that snaps and locks them in place automatically. So now I have all three grids aligned. And then if I want to move them, I can move them all together. Another thing to note is this 3D toggle here means that these grids are changed globally. So if I move them out to this position here, all grids throughout the project will be moved out to this position. If I move them in to this position here, all grids throughout the project will be moved to that position. If you want it to be a view specific change, say for instance, you want to add more detailing just to this view, then you need to toggle that to show 2D and then the grids would only move in this view. So let's go through now and align all of our grid positioning. So once you are happy with the positioning, one more thing to note is that if you did want to remove grid bubbles, you have this tick box at the end. So you can always tick that box and that gets rid of the grid bubble at the end. Now, one thing to note is that that is a view specific parameter and that only affects the drawings in that particular view. It doesn't affect any global settings at all. So let's also go through and adjust the view specific grid bubble locations. I want them on the top row and on the left hand row as well. One final thing about grids is if you select one of the grids and you go into edit type, you can change the line style. So you have the color for the grid line. So at the minute it's at gray one, two, eight, and you can change the pattern. So at the minute it's on the grid line pattern, but if for instance, you wanted a, another pattern, you can always change that to, for example, dash dot and then hit apply. And then that will change the grid. Let's change that back to the grid line and then hit OK. So now we have our grids in place. One last thing to note about the grids is that any structural columns which are located at a grid in intersection automatically have that information embedded into the column. So if I click on this column here, this automatically shows the column location as A1, which is the correct grid reference, A1. If I click on this one, it would show B1. So let's do that. B1 and then likewise for this one, this one will show C1. That makes it easy to locate any of your grids across the project. And then another thing to note is if you have a column which is slightly off grid, so for instance this one here, it will show you the distance away from the grid. So this one is on intersection A3, but it's located several millimeters away from the grid line center. So if I select that, 
it shows you 420. So if we do a dimension from the center to the grid, that's going to show you 420 as well. So that directly ties in with the grid location marker. So if I nudge this, it's automatically going to change. So 435, 435, 450, 450. And that's the end of the video. Be sure to check out the other part to this basic to advanced floor plan mini series. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more regularly released Revit content. I'll see you in the next one.